Hello, thank you for uh, for tuning in for my second installation of uh, talking about lyrics, predominantly from Even and Blackouts. So right now you will hear the song, The Writer, which is the one that I will be talking about today. And then I will launch into a description both in the music and also in the lyrics. Uh, so if you know the song, you can pass the next two or so minutes and get to the heart of the matter. Thank you. Comfort is what we need, my babies. Listen and I'll show you how. The sidewalks, the carpet, and the bushes are the walls. Through the sky, last night he covers his young. The cold clocks, the cold wind. Christmas Eve, and I thought I'd uh, maybe talk about one of my more storytelling type songs. And uh, the one that is most popular and probably the most loved song for even a blackouts, probably based on the fact that whenever we play it, people sort of start perking up and actually start singing along with Liz. Uh, so I'm pretty proud of this one. I, I, I still, I love playing it all the time. So uh, I'm going to do a uh, little bit of guitar in the beginning because this is, this is one of the first songs I really started getting confident with uh, finger picking. There's a couple before this. There's one on the first record, which was a cover, which was uh, Only You, which had a similar pattern. Uh, and then I sort of stole what I was doing on that. I 
I stole that part for the for part of uh, Writer. So based on a cover of a song that was all synthesizer, and I put finger picking on, I ripped myself off of a cover song. <laughs> um, so basically, I don't know if this means to you if you want to learn about the finger picking, but this is basically, it starts on a basic, I said basic a lot there, but it is a basic, if you look up finger picking styles, this is the first one you sort of learn, which basically only, basically, why is that word, uh, focuses mostly on the two fingers, the thumb and the index finger, which bounce, uh, like, for instance, you could just have a bounce between the E and the G, you know, of course. Um, and then what, what the thumb does is it goes from the back and forth from the E to the A string, and that's the normal one. So this is a this sort of E formation, uh, the first chord of the song for you, or the writer. I forgot what it's called when you actually don't put down the whole you sort of leave the open bottom strings ring out. Uh, there's probably a name for that, but I don't know what it is. I just really like the way the E sounds down here with the open strings at the bottom. But anyway, so I was saying the picking pattern so it ends up being something like this. And I use this in uh, Heaven, which I'm not sure if I wrote before or after this. So that's your basic finger picking pattern using the two fingers. Um, but what I, what I started doing early on is I just didn't like that sort of dum 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 dum. So occasionally I would throw in the the thumb going to the uh, e the, the D string. So it would go basically back and forth from from the E to A to E to D while the index finger is still picking the G. So. It's, That added a little bit more uh, variety to me. I like that. Uh, and uh, this song, I, I have some songs that use all five fingers, but the writer uses mostly four. And sometimes I'll throw the uh, the pinky in on the E string, just for uh, I don't know, just because it's there. <laughs> uh, so basically, what what's happening is my the other the middle finger and the the one next to the pinky are, are just randomly hitting like two strings. Not randomly, I think it's usually with the uh, every other thumb hit. So instead of having something like this, I end up having... So that's using all, oh, that's using four fingers and occasionally throwing in the, I'll throw in the, throw in the pinkies too. Uh, so, because my goal was to try to use all five fingers. Uh, and I mostly use four, I think, on most of the songs I do. Um, yeah. I think on uh, thresholds from the basement, I started using a lot more of the all of all of my fingers. Like there's this, this rhythm part that I do that I really, really like, uh, but you can't really hear it in the song. Uh, how's it go? Yeah, that's okay. get when I keep up. Oh yes. That uses up all five fingers on this one. But it's based on this sort of that sort of feel. Anyway, 
that's enough of that. I really like doing that. And this. That's using all five fingers too. But uh, the writer uses uh, four fingers based on a two finger pattern with throwing in the extra two bottom strings, the, the B and the A, B and the E. So anyway, that's what I wanted to say that. So basically when I wrote The Writer, I wanted to challenge uh, myself in a few things, which was that. I wanted to start using um, finger picking a lot more. And then this song also has some of the faster down stroking too. Uh, there's that really, I wanted to use, uh, you know, a lot of people use this, this octave thing starts showing up in uh, pop punk. I don't always like the sound of it, but I thought on an acoustic, it would sound kind of neat. So that's was the sort of the impetus for that whole breakdown in the middle of the song. Uh, I, Cause I wanted to try something with that. That's the hands doing crazy stuff there. So that, but then with his, uh, so anyway, um, so and that's why I, I had this really long sort of. Breakdown where it builds into the downstroke. Because I really wanted to, uh, with the band then, when we were doing it all acoustic and all, mostly all downstroking, downstroking and finger picking, I really wanted to test the band. And uh, it's also a good point in the song for us all to make sure we're in the same groove. Because uh, you can really hear it when bass, guitar, drums, and, you know, the two guitars are. In sync with the downstroking. So this song has all the little um, things that I was teaching myself at the time. Um, so that's that. Now I got a list of things here. Um, one of the other things I wanted to stress in the writing of a song um, was after our first record, Myths and Imaginary Magicians, I realized that Liz uh, was a pretty great singer. And uh, she actually reminded me a lot of Julie Andrews from, um, specifically in Mary Poppins. That's one of my favorite movies. So uh, as soon as uh, Liz, I think the first time she auditioned and started singing, I was like, oh, that's beautiful. Um, and she's probably the most clearest speaking punk singer we have out there. Uh, and she has perfect pitch, so she hits all the notes perfectly. Uh, so this song was my first attempt to write this sort of uh, Julie Andrews uh, feel for her. We actually, for a while, had her uh, dressing kind of like Mary Poppins, and we had a big carpet bag that she would come out on stage and pull all of our instruments out of. Just needs a touch here and there. Well, first things first. I always say the place to hang a hat is on a hat stand. Um, because I was really sort of giving in to this idea that she was like the Mary Poppins of punk rock. Mary Pop Pumpkins. <laughs> um, now we think she's the Soundheim uh, of punk rock because uh, uh, it's gotten really complicated, the, the stuff that we play with the band. That the worst pies in London Only lard and nothing more is than just Revolting, all greasy and gritty it looks like it's molting and tastes like Well, pity a woman alone With a limited wind And the worst pies in London So that was that. Um, I think a thing I learned, too, on, um, on a cover song we did uh, one fine day is uh, I don't I don't know the uh, the scales but I knew that Liz could really wail once a song sort of had the E and I like to play it down here where it has the 
This is kind of a metal thing to do where you have the open E and then you have the, the A on the E too. So I just love that sound, the double E sound at the top there. Um, but... the I'm singing in the wrong key but that's so basically we discovered that she could sing really good uh, anywhere but that was the best one so I knew that I wanted this song the writer to be uh, focusing on the E uh, and um, I actually tr I try to I try not to overdo it but every s record has at least one song that starts on that same spot like uh, catacombs on the following album no that's on the that's on the thresholds from the basement so catacombs is <laughs> yeah and the new one actually has two songs there's this little song called the reason there's no reason uh and then the new one i sort of uh i I wrote another one, um, but this one I threw in the minor sounding just to change it up a bit. So that one goes. But all those are based on the fact that Liz sings really well in the over the E chord. It might even be the E scale. I'm not sure. If you know, please tell me in the comments below if the writer is in the E scale. Um... Is that the three notes on that I wanted to reach? Yeah. So let's get into what the uh, lyrics are about. This one uh, is very poetic. It's, I don't know if it's as deep, if it's as deep as Dear Resonance, but um, it's more about, it's a very simple situation that I describe in a very floral manner, basically. S to have it feel like a, a story time. Um, I stole this from a play that I did, which was about a writer who was obsessed with his own characters, but because he couldn't live his own life, um, he was too shy and too introverted to live his, in his own life, so he tries to live vicariously uh, through his characters. That's uh, called simulticity. Um, but the whole basis of this song, the writer, is my picture of it is someone outside someone's house in the winter or verging on the winter time, um, maybe obsessed or romantically inclined towards uh, a girl that he's afraid to approach. And he has a note in his hand that he wants to give to her, a poem that he wrote. Um, so he basically sits out there all night and um, never gives it to her. Um, so that is the that so that's as, as simple as it is. The whole song is basically that someone sitting out in front of a house, wanting to give a note that he wrote and he never does. Um, and the other idea I had, well, let's go through the lyrics here and then it'll, it'll come up. Uh, Comfort is what we need, my babies. Listen, I'll show you how. I wanted uh, it to begin. That actually wasn't in the thing that I wrote for the play. Uh, I wanted this to give it that feel of a it, it's story time. And uh, I like the idea of Liz calling the audience um, babies. Um, and also it's playing with this idea of, uh, I'll mention it later, but the idea of that, it's something I think about a lot because I never wanted to have uh, kids. For some reason, it's never been, it's never been very important to me. So I've allowed creativity and art to sort of take that place of what you would get from from a child uh, ultimately you know it's not the same thing we all know <laughs> but this song was sort of playing with that idea of uh, creations being babies uh, you know you nurture something and then you let it out into the world it was sort of that idea so i want i like the idea that she was going to tell the audience a story uh, and now, and then listen, and I'll show you how. Um, the how leads into this building 
line that goes throughout the whole thing and sort of builds to a, a larger description. But the first one is the sidewalks, the carpet, and the bushes are the walls. Um, this is another theme that I play with that really starts appearing in the next record, Fall of the House of Even, where I'm, I start describing a house, um, but using other things. Like in Fall of the House of Even, it's usually used in terms of emotional states, uh, taken really from Edgar Allan Poe's Fall of the House of Usher, where the house is sort of a metaphor for the decaying of the relationships going on inside the house. So that was sort of playing with that. This person is outside. And I like the idea. I'm also playing with this guy. I was playing with a little bit of, of being homeless because there, there was a worry to me that if I don't focus on family, if I focus just on art and creativity, there is a chance down the line that I won't have any money and I'll be homeless. So it's sort of playing with that idea. And so that you get the, the beginnings of it, the sidewalks, the carpet. So, yeah, that makes sense. And the bushes are the walls. So basically he's, he's building a house around him outside of this other person's house. Uh, and through the skyless night, he covers his young. Um, so I love this idea of making the listener think that I'm talking about an actual child. And it's all built that way that you picture a man or a woman holding uh, a child outside all night. It, it does have a lot to do with that too. In Chicago, you see sad things like that. A lot of homeless people, whether they're poor or they they're, have uh, mental illnesses, um, they're always huddled and sometimes they're huddled together and, and they have kids. So I wanted that sort of feel of we're talking about a man and his child or a woman and his child. Uh, so through the skyless night, he covers his young. Skyless night is just supposed to imply that it's it's gray and cloudy out. That was sort of my... I like the idea of something skyless. I actually used that a lot back in the my earlier writing days. Something about the sky has gone out, you know, which I got from Bauhaus, which they got from the old chicken, uh, the chicken who thought the sky, the sky was falling. Anyway, so that's sort of a reference to that too, the that old story of the. Well, I don't know the name of that either, but there's this old story that uh, my mom used to read me about a chicken who thought the sky was falling down. Chicken Little! What is it? What's going on? The sky is falling! The sky is falling! The sky is falling? Are you crazy? Uh, then it says, The coat blocks the cold wind whistling through. That's just wordplay. I liked having coat and cold together right there. Wind whistling. So a lot of alliteration going on there. But basically, you know, you get the picture of his coat. And there's, you know, the wind's whistling through the air. Uh, the sidewalks, the carpet, and the bushes are the walls. And I, so that doesn't add any onto that one. His eyes bleed salt crystal ice. I really like that line. Once again, playing with very simple ideas, but trying to say them in interesting ways. Uh, his eyes bleed salt crystal ice. That's, I got that from the feeling, especially in Chicago, where you're like, it's freezing outside and you turn a corner then all of a sudden your your eyelashes freeze and uh, all that you know you have tears in your eyes from trying to keep your eyes open and then they start um, they start icing up too so that's sort of that idea uh, and his hair deeply swooshing thinly sliced paper cuts I like that as a sentence because it's not even really a sentence I don't even know. I could. I should analyze it, but I'm not going to now. And his hair deeply swishing, thinly sliced paper cuts. That's basically saying that, uh, you know, when I used to have a lot of, when I have had long hair, sometimes when you'd be outside, uh, and sweating like running, and then it's cold, and sort of the hair becomes icy, and you know, I picture it like cutting my cheek. So that's, you picture this guy sort of huddled out there, and his hair is long, almost like the. A uh, Jethro Tullian Aqualung type figure from the cover of that record. Um, so the sidewalks, the carpet, and the bushes are the walls. Repeats. Oh, and then this is where it builds. I like I like that idea of I had them all together. I think at the beginning of the song I had 
all of the descriptions of the house at once. But then I like the idea of it building, like the actual house is being built in the context of the song. So the it adds on to the moon's his lamp and the world's his door. So that's really simple, like, you know, the light. And it's showing that it's night out and the world's his door. I like that idea that the world, his doors, basically meaning that anything can happen. And uh, the world door actually becomes really important later. And <laughs> see, there's all these records has themes that build on each other. Like the, uh, this, I don't know if this is the first time I started talking about doors, but it, it um, was also very important that play that this was based on. The, bl the play was called Simulticity. And uh, all we had was one door on set. So I like that idea too. Um, yeah, then his young, sleeping firmly, pinned between kneecaps and pockets, dreams of days resembling life. This I wanted vague, you know. I wanted to think, oh, is this, this is actually a child he has? Um, but the young, sleeping firmly, pinned between kneecaps and pockets. So basically it's saying, you know, I'm still comparing the actually tangible written letter to a, a to a child and since the letter hasn't been read yet it's sleeping so i like that idea that that's it has two meanings and so a baby sleeps and if a letter isn't isn't read then it's sleeping too waiting to be you know woken up sleeping firmly pinned between kneecaps and pockets i've just given the impression that he's all curled up outside Dreams of days resembling life. That's, I don't, you know, when I wrote that, that just came out. It doesn't make complete sense. Dreams of days resembling life. You know, I just like the idea. It's, you know, it's basically saying that he's dreaming of the time where he actually is going to be fulfilled in his life. Like, you know, will he ever talk to this girl? Will he ever, uh, will writing be able to take the place of, family and relationships ultimately no it's a little you know it's a sad happy song <laughs> uh so the sidewalks the carpet and the bushes are the walls the moon's his lamp and the world's his, world's his door kneecaps and pockets dreams of days resembling life i do this in the uh, missing uh missing manifesto too where i like the idea of uh, a line kind of chorusy sounding that takes pieces of uh, the verse that's already happened. So that takes a lot of those. It adds into this list of foundation. It adds the kneecaps and the pockets, dreams of days resembling life. Uh, and then it has that huge... Uh, then this is where I, I would... That's right. In the song, I rap this part, which is in the morning to the sound of... I don't know why I decided I wanted to do this. I think it just... When I was writing the song... When I came to this part of the song, I just I was like, oh, that'd be kind of neat if I if I sang it. But I wasn't really confident with singing back then at all. So I was like, oh, I'll just say it. And people say, hey, you rap in that song. I, was like, I don't really consider it rapping. I'm just talking to the rhythm. <laughs> and that goes uh, in the morning. So basically, we've just described the whole situation at night. So it basically builds that this is happening at night without saying it, implied with the moon and him curled up. <clears throat> so in the morning, to the sound of word full news slapping porches, makes sense. I just, he's asleep and then the newsboy is throwing newspapers on the door so that the sound wakes him up. Uh, porches, he rises with his feet attacked by chimerical worms. <laughs> and I like this idea. What I do is chimerical worms. I love that word chimerical, which means it's sort of, I think it was a mythological horse at one point. It just, it just means sort of fanciful, like not real. Chimerical. Of our pertaining to a chimera. Being a figment of the imagination, fantastic in the archaic sense. Inherently fantastic, wildly fanciful. C H I M E R I C A L. 
Uh, so fanciful worms. I like the idea because sometimes, well, basically I'm talking about your foot falling asleep. And sometimes to me it feels like like worms squirming around. But I like the idea too. This is my sort of tongue in cheek playing with the audience that I use the phrase chimerical worms, which people not might understand what it means. But then I, <laughs> I say a line that, you know, is supposed to clarify it. Like when, if you say something confusing, like, chimerical worms the other thing would say oh he's you know his foot is falling asleep but instead what i say is uh, needles with teeth <laughs> which is like a whole nother it's like another metaphor that doesn't clarify anything um because it's just the same feeling it's like uh, i just imagine this idea that uh your foot falling asleep is also feels like you know the needles the pins and needles uh but needles with teeth i mean it's, it's biting it's more active uh, he takes his young into his hands. This is what I really like about this. And the, to me, I don't know if people get this, but this is where the baby that you might picture in your head becomes something else. He takes his young into his hands and folds it into a little squ- and folds it into a little square. So I love the image or someone thinking it's still about a baby and and picturing this guy like folding a baby into a square, but. I, it's also supposed to be leading into the idea that, oh, what he's talking about is uh, something that can be folded, like a piece of paper, and slips it into his sock. I just like that image of, of you know, not putting it in his pocket, but uh, putting it somewhere closer to the feet. I don't, I don't know why. I kind of like that idea that a letter und- undelivered uh, still have sort of motion <laughs> in in a sock. Uh, he puts it in his sock. He fits it in his sock. I, I was just sort of, I think me and Liz were just goofing around and we sort of came up with that playing with repeating each other, which I like. We do that. We do that often. And oh yeah, I like throwing oh yeahs in. And then it goes back to Liz speaking. He then, which is, gives it back to that little third person feel there too, which is nice. As if I'm the, I think the thing I was dealing with too is uh, early on, this is still early on. So I'm dealing with trying to figure out how I write for a woman singer. And more and more you realize you just write, we just, I just wrote for myself and, and Liz related to it. And, you know, the more we got to know each other, the more I learned what she was going through, the more she learned what I was going through. And it just sort of uh, worked a lot. It worked more easily without having to think about it too much. Um, But that, was probably one of the reasons, too, that I put my own voice in there. And then she goes into the third person. He then walks away with foot tapping the pavement and the other kicking up mulch. Uh, the The image I used for this was from a movie called Naked, which is one of my favorite movies of all time, uh, by Mike Lee. It's a great movie if you haven't seen it. Uh, where the last image is this guy in a, a long coat, raincoat, stumbling down the street. So that's the image I pictured, but I didn't want to say stumbling down the street. So I like the idea of one foot tapping the pavement and the other kicking up mulch, you know, mulch being fake grass. And I like the idea, or, you know, someone had just replaced their grass. I like that too. It still has this feel of a, of a house being built, like stuff being put down and, uh, the tapping the pavement and kicking up mulch sort of gives the impression to me of hobbling along. Uh, and that's the song. I don't know if I'm going to release this, but uh, there it is. That's the writer, one of the favorite songs. I think both the music and the sort of ambiguous but very image-driven lyrics uh, make this a very popular song. And it has, it allows it to have the, the, the slowness that I like. I wanted the band to be able to take time, but it also has that quick energy that I wanted to keep from being in a punk band. 
Um, so I think this song encapsulizes what Even in Blackouts is trying to do in one song, basically. Basically. There I am. I'm going to end it on saying basically. 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 In a fundamental, essential, or basic manner. B-A-S-I-C-A-L-L-Y